Well, a very good morning to you. It's Friday and that means an update on the Loft Railway. I've been really hard at work and I think you'd be quite pleased at uh, seeing some of the progress that I've been doing. So without further ado, let me show you what I've been up to. to Weir Yard up in the loft and uh, today we're back on the diet of classic DVDs. I'm actually finishing off watching Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom uh, and uh, it's just a case of I just need something on in the background. But what have I been up to? Well over here, I'm going to move that out because that just super saturates everything. It's just a little work like to help me out. Um, what I've been doing down here is laying these loops so what you can see a bit of a change from last time we've got the gradient at the back that goes up the incline to the top level but I've laid these four loops and um, colored the sides of the rails ready also cut, tried coloring some of the other sides of the rails I don't know whether it shows up so well here but believe me it does make a really good difference and I just started taping in place some newspaper ready for the shaper sheet that I've got which is going to go over the top there I want to get that done so that I can ballast right up to it. And now this tape here is, um, the idea behind this is I've actually put some tape across where there's a little bit of a gap between the bits of the baseboard so that the ballast doesn't just all rain through. Yeah, learning as I go. Made that mistake before, I'm not gonna make it again. I put a little bit of the tape down over here as well. It's just a good little tip, I suppose. The ballast and the scenery will cover that up so you won't actually ever see it but it just makes doing the ballasting a whole lot easier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on. Uh, I'm going to go and get the shaper sheet, cut it to size, just try and get it to where I want it, and then mix up some plaster and plaster over the top. So uh, let's get to it. I've got the shaper sheet cut and sort of massaged to the right sort of shapes. It's just a bit there, actually, that's just, uh, just lifting. I need to sort that out. The next step is to get a coat of plaster on this. I've also done down the back as well. Might as well do both sides at the same time. And then that will allow me to ballast that incline. And it should very quickly, once I get a layer of grass and all sorts onto there, uh, it, it's going to very quickly start to look something nice. And that's what I always find with building these sort of projects, is that you, you put a load of effort into one particular bit of scenic stuff, and it all comes together and that provides the uh, the nucleus around which the rest of the layout kind of uh, uh, consolidates and it drives you on. Uh, you get uh, a really good feeling that what you're doing is really good and it motivates you to do the next section and so on. It just kind of feeds itself. So I'm just going to fix that little bit that's um, popped out and then I'm going to mix up some plaster. Uh, get the plaster over all of that and then hopefully we'll be in a position to uh, when it sets uh, get some brown paint on it and then uh, scatter some uh, grass scatter into the paint to stick to it and that'll start to build up the layers of what I want on this. There's not going to be any trees obviously too close to the tracks and uh, it'll, it would in a real railway yard that was in use uh, back in the day would have been fairly well kept. So it'd just be um, unkempt but not too long grass is the plan for this. Right the shaper sheets in front and back and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up the plaster. So I've got a little pile there and this is what I'm using. Shaper Sheet Plaster C1180 from Woodland Scenics. Um, and uh, let's see how this goes. I need 2.5 measures of that plaster to every one measure of water. So I've uh, because I'm up in the loft, I've refilled, uh, well cleaned out then refilled a coke bottle with some water. That's more than what I need. But um, I also actually, before I start that, I'm going to wet down all of the shaper sheet. Uh, I've got a bottle over there. And we're on to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So I'm making my way through some quality classic films. I'm going to get on and do that. So uh, see you in a bit. 
I'm watching a classic Canadian Grand Prix, Montreal 2007 or 2008, I'm not sure which. And uh, it's quite a good race, but uh, that's not really the main feature, as you well know. The main feature is that some of this ballasting is done, and you can see the incline has received ground cover and a bit of grass. First pass with the grass. Um, oh gosh, that rhymes. Haiku there. Uh, first pass with the grass and uh, started with some bridge abutments and I've test fitted and glued so if they're not really test fitted hopefully they'll stay put but these are the former Hornby 00 girder bridge sides that were part of the garden railway and those of you going oh my god no how could you destroy a Hornby 00 girder bridge well what you see is all there was of that particular girder bridge. They were purchased second hand from a uh, model railway shop probably about 30 years ago, just like that, but daubed in black paint and uh, subsequently been through my father's layout and uh, then the garden layout and now they're finding what will hopefully be their permanent home up here in the loft. So uh, I'm actually quite pleased with that. It's just about the right length. So glue is drying and that piece of wood on top is there just to hold that top uh, girder in the right place whilst various glues dry. And uh, then I'm going to have to get some filler to kind of sort out this little bit of hole here, uh, sort out around here, got to put down some kind of retaining wall thing going on. There's a lot still to do but it's getting there. So quite pleased actually with this area. Uh, once all this glue dries, I'm going to clean this track. Uh, that glue over there for some reason has gone very white. Hopefully that won't dry in a weird manner. But then um, what I actually want to do is be able to start storing some rolling stock on the layout. Uh, I'm fed up of having stuff that I can't really do anything with. So um, the plan is that this area will start to fill up with wagons that are currently in storage and start to actually look like a proper model railway. And it's a bit like what I was saying earlier on, that uh, you get a scenic area that starts to come together and it kind of becomes the nucleus around which a lot of the inspiration for doing more and more up in the loft begins from. And no doubt as I go, I'll get better and better. So, um, still a lot to do as we look around um, over there it's not really, there's test fitting of tunnel mouths just roughly working out where there's going to be a, quite a big hillside and pretty much everything else I suppose is how you saw it last so um, there's still so much work to do really is but uh, making great progress I'm going to call it a night because it is getting quite late I'm going to leave all this to dry until the morning and then I need to give that a pass over with um, sort of spray on glue, some more scatter, kind of build it up, get um, things going on. I need to get some cheap DIY filler as well so I can start to just finish off some of those areas. But yeah, really pleased with how things are coming along. So maybe back to the Grand Prix. It's another day up here in Weir Yard and I'm just about to settle in to watch a film. It's actually Dragnet, uh, the one with Dan Aykroyd and uh, I want to say Peter Sellers, not Peter Sellers. Um, oh, his name's just really escaped me. Tom Hanks. That was it. Oh, I got there in the end. Uh, nothing's changed as yet. Um, the problem I was getting with the ballast seems to have sort of sorted itself out. I've not been very pleased actually with uh, the particular PVA version that I've been using. It's just not worked as uh, hoped for. So, bit in the bullet. And what I've actually done is I've been out to the range of all places. And this is what I've got. Uh, Craft Planet PVA glue. And this is five litres and it costs ten pounds. So it's not too bad a price actually, and uh, we'll certainly go through a lot of that very quickly. Um, but I'm going to need a lot as well. Also bought some uh, Polyfiller, other brands are available, it's just simply a case of us in the range and that was the only brand that they were selling. And uh, between the two of those, plus a few other bits and pieces, I'm hoping to make some great progress. Now I've also bought um, some paint brushes, and again these were cheap, 
But the uh, the main one in here is actually just quite by accident. I discovered that these flat-headed paintbrushes are perfect for doing ballasting, for just getting the ballast in the right place. They're actually far better than the brushes I've used in the past. So I went out and bought myself one of these. Uh, the others are really just um, um, I, I'll find a use for them. But um, really, that big one was the only one I really wanted out of this pack. But they came as a package deal and were about 20 pence more expensive than buying them individually. So why wouldn't you? I've also, as you've possibly seen the bag, been to Arcadia in Shaw. And uh, the Woodland Scenics rep, hello to you. Um, I, I had a good long chat with him. But uh, I'm a bit of a convert to the Woodland Scenics range. And this particular one has caught my eye and I've picked this up. And these are the Ready Rocks. Uh, they do quite a range. There's some much bigger ones. So you would get four in a box as opposed to these six, almost like fragments. But I felt that these were more readily usable in the situation that I'm going to be using them in. And look at that finish. They're actually made of plaster and they're hand painted. Um, so it's um, quite unique. There are some unique colours. I mean, they'll be the same shapes. They'll all be made in the same moulds. But um, hand painted there, it says no two rocks alike, simply attached to layout. And that's what I plan to do. And you can also get the creek bed ready rocks, uh, which are if you're making like a, a rocky shallow uh, river with a mix of rocks, gravel and sand on the base, you can use them. But I, I've chosen these. Now they've been in stock a little while, so that price, you might think, oh, that's a bit pricey. Well, they got pricier still when he looked up how much they were going to be when he reordered. They were at RRP of over £21. So um, it's not cheap, but they do look to be a really good product. And that's the thing. You know, at the end of the day, if you're spending £150, £200 on a locomotive, why would you cheap out on the scenery to go around it? So, you know, the days of dyed sawdust have pretty much uh, gone and bitten the dust. Um, and these products, yes, they are expensive, but they do make your life a lot easier. And even people who may have felt uh, daunted by taking on some of these scenery projects will find things an awful lot easier than days of yours. So you too can have a really good layout with some of these products. And there's a few that I want to test over the coming weeks. Um, but this will get incorporated into the layout. And yeah, that's quite a big outlay. But it'll be there for all time and hopefully it will look pretty good and uh, give decades of enjoyment in the background of the trains going by. So um, I've also got the all-important uh, Pico rail joiners and uh, I seem to be going through hundreds of these. I think this is packets number 18, 19 and uh, 20 uh, going into this layout and there's still no let up. I've also bought some points which have just been... Uh, laying out over here so you can see them over there just to get an idea of where the yard's going to uh, go out from the bottom of the hump so i've got to get all of that in and then this big open space in front is where the uh the traction motive depot is going to be so um, i'm talking with the turntable but the only problem is where you see those lines on the top that's where Somewhere underneath, it's probably a bit too dark. I've got cross members, so I'm going to have to measure turntables very carefully uh, because if I want to cut out for a turntable, uh, I obviously can't cut out where those cross members are. So, a little bit of thought is going to have to go in uh, somewhere around here. Uh, of course, as that yard spreads out, the space available is going to get less and less, but certainly this is where I envisage the uh, motive power depot to be. And then, of course, still got to build this line here round and ignore the shape of sheet. It'll probably go over the top of this. I'll have to build it up or chisel it out or something. But that's going to make it round and come round this side of the uh, MPD round here. And then this area here is all it's as much a mystery to me as it is to you guys. So I'll just see how things work out. I'm going to have to salvage. Some of the shelving in the shed, the idea is that um, what I want to do is take down some of the shelves which are made of the same ply as I've used here for the baseboards uh, and recycle it because the shed isn't going to need as many shelves for stuff 
Uh, they were actually originally built to put coaches and stuff on, and then after the burglary, that put paid to that. But I can recycle the wood, and uh, at the moment I'm all spent up, so I'm going to have to take things easy. So I'm going to set off Dragnet, and uh, I'm going to get to work. So I'll catch you in a bit when I've got something to show you. Well, the never-ending track lane. It's, I'm, I'm over the worst of it, I think. So what you can see here is some of these loops taking shape. Now they have to widen out to get around this uh, post here. But coming around here, and again, I hate this bulb. It's almost there super saturating the video. Um, then they all join up again here to the bottom of the hump. And all these points, the point motors are in and the wires wired to chop blocks waiting for uh, all that to get sorted out. An awful lot of wagons starting to appear in the sidings as well, and that's because over there, in fact I'm going to set it running, I've decided to uh, get myself a nice long train running. Which somehow has managed to derail itself. So uh, replaced all of those wagons with uh, trainer coaches on the main line, and this just gives a sense of just how big this layout is. So we've got class 45 with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 coaches. And uh, it doesn't look like it's filling the room, which is brilliant. So I can run some really long prototypical trains. And that's pretty much one of the things that I've kind of not been able to do in the shed. So you've seen the wagon train of 50 odd wagons running around. Now I've got um, coaches, uh, 16 coaches long there. I think that's pretty much all of my BR blue grey stock. I must have a hunt around and see if there are any others, but I think that's the entire lot. So really pleased with how progress is coming along. Uh, but I've got one more loop to go round and match up with that point. The other line out of that point is going to go to the MPD and there'll be some uh, things like triple sidings. Not really quite decided, but then there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of ballasting to do. But uh, of course I've got the PVA glue that hopefully won't uh, do the weird thing that the speed bond PVA was doing. So with any luck this ballasting will be a whole lot easier. Finally finished all these loops, got them all in, and uh, just as well really because I'm almost out of track. But one thing I'd like to talk to you about is track pins. And what you can see here is I've got quite a lot of the Pico SL14 track pins. Now I have to say it's with great sadness that I cannot recommend this product. Instead I'm going to show you this, which I believe is a Hornby track pin, and these are much, much better. You can see, whilst they're slightly shorter, they're a lot thicker, and they don't tend to bend and break when you're putting them in. These, you're probably wasting about half of the packet. And to give you an illustration, these are all the bent ones that I've had to then pull out and replace, because you'd be tapping them in very carefully, I may add, and they just bend at the slightest provocation. So the Pico SL14 uh, track pins, I'm afraid I can't recommend this product. But now I've done all this, I've got to decide, am I going to press on with ballasting? Actually, I've got to, actually what I've got to do is I've got to solder some dropper wires to all this track. I've got to colour the sides. There's actually still a lot to do before I can ballast. So I think that what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to call it a night up here. Um, it's actually quite warm up here. I've had the computer on and all the lighting on and uh, you can't really see anything. Um, that is Hollywood lights dark, very dark. So that is collateral damage, uh, which uh, that's the, uh, the cover for it. It's actually a really good film, I have to say, but um, Hollywood lights dark, really dark. But anywho, um, that's where I'm up to. I'm making a lot of progress. So uh, thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, 
share it too and also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying thanks again for your company and you take really good care of yourself and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon and a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.